So if you've worked with AngularJS or some other um, software framework, you might have came across the idea of data binding. And I think it like data binding is sort of a concept that is broader than just software. So I want to give you an example of real-world data binding to help you understand what it what it really is. So I've been going to the doctor a lot recently, and I've gone to the physical therapist, to the dermatologist, to the orthopedist, some other places, and every time I go, I have to fill out a form. And pretty much every time, one of the fields in that form is for my address, where I live. And, you know, it's repetitive to fill it out multiple times. And furthermore, like if I move, uh, let's say I move and I go to the physical therapist and I have to enter my updated address, it would be cool if that were reflected in the dermatologist's form and the orthopedist's form. And that's not the case. I have to then go to the dermatologist and update this form and same thing for the orthopedist. So what data binding is, is when you change something in one place and it automatically gets changed in other places. So if the address field in all three of these places was was bound to each other, um, a change here would be reflected here and here. And a change here would be reflected here and here. A change here would be reflected here and here. Anywhere you make a change would update all of the bound places. So at a high level, that's what data binding is. And you can see how it's like, it doesn't necessarily have to be restricted to software. So in the context of software, we usually want our data to be bound between the view and the model. So a change to the view would update the model, and the change to the model would update the view. And really, the reason why we like to use data binding is because it, it makes coding easier to think about. We don't have to think about what's the data here, what's the data here, I have to make sure they're updated. You can just think of some sort of single source of truth where the data is here. And you can just trust that, you know, this is the data and that the view is going to reflect the single source of truth and the model is also going to reflect the single source of truth. And it makes it easier to just, you know, think about this rather than thinking about what is it here, what is it here, let me make sure they're updated. It makes it easier to write code this way. I think it'll help to be more concrete. So let's think about a typical scenario where we have an input field and a paragraph, and when we make a change to the input field, it gets reflected in the paragraph. Um, so as far as data binding goes, we want you know the input fields and the paragraph to be bound to the same uh, property name, we'll call it. But more generally, we want our, our UI, our JavaScript environment, and the DOM to be all also bound to this name property. And just to clarify one little thing, um, so really this whole entire thing is the, the browser. So it's a little bit misleading that I said browser, but what I mean is really what you're seeing, the, the user interface, the visual thing. Um, anyway, but uh, as far as data binding goes, we want the, the UI, the JavaScript environment, and the DOM to all be bound to the same name property. So you can see here, they all reflect this name property as Adam. But as a developer, how do we make this continue? Like, let's say someone typed Adam Z in here. How are we going to make sure that everything is updated? Well, we would have to listen for an event on the input field. That's the first thing, is listen for an event. That's the first thing. Um, when that event happens, we have to update the JavaScript environment. This is like our model, so we would have to update this. This is the second thing. And the third thing we'd have to do is to update the DOM with our new model property. So third, we have to update the DOM, make this Adam Z. And finally, this isn't really our job. This happens automatically, but once the DOM is updated, it repaints the UI for us. So yeah, this isn't really our job, but it's something that has to happen. Um, yeah, so again, we often have situations where we want all three areas to be bound to the same property, and we often have to write this code, this one, two, three. And 
this is bad for a couple reasons. Like, one, it's just repetitive. It takes time, and it's really, um, you know, just monotonous task that it would be cool if we could delegate it away to some framework. Um, two, it's uh, it's just it's error prone in the sense that more code is more complexity. It's just more things to think about. Uh, it would be cool if we could do something like this, where we can write, let's say, something like this: input ng model equals name, and p is also bound to the name thing, name property. So here, instead of writing all of this code, this one, two, and three, all we're doing is saying we want this input field to be bound to name, and we want the paragraph to be bound to name. And we don't care how you do it, just make sure that everything is updated for us. We want the UI to reflect this, we want the DOM to reflect this, and we want our model to reflect this. And there are frameworks that let us do this, that, that, that do this for us, I should say. And so this video is just sort of a high level, level overview. Um, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to explain how different frameworks accomplish this task for us.